Hello, my name is David Trimberger and I am a Paramedic Care 3 student. And today I'm going to be explaining uh, kind of like the differences between the Cincinnati Stroke Scale and the NIH Stroke Scale. So before, uh, before I begin, the first thing that I want to go over is what exactly is a stroke? A stroke is also known as a cerebrovascular accident, which pretty much means that you have something that is cutting off the blood supply um, to the brain, which in return means that it's not getting oxygen, sugar, nutrients, pretty much anything else, and it's eventually going to be leading to cell death and could eventually end up killing your patient and or your patient having severe neurological deficits. So... If someone is having a stroke, the best course of treatment that they need to get is going to be either um, surgery, if they feel that they can be able to remove the blood clot or the blockage that is currently happening, or they can receive a drug that is known as TPA. TPA is given IV, and it normally, if you are reading the exact definition of the drug, it only has a two-hour long window. So that means like from the onset of symptoms to two hours later, that's as long as it's able to be given. Um, but in all true reality, it has about a uh, 4.5 hour window. And then depending on if your physician has the ability to um, perform different functions with TPA and be able to administer uh other electrolytes and other things of the sort with it, there could possibly be a situation where you could have up to a six hour window, but that's not always uh, the case. So following with that, um, I did my research paper over tr the, d the two main types of stroke recognition scales, which is the Cincinnati and the NIH. So for the Cincinnati stroke scale, it, it uh, its true purpose is trying to recognize that someone is having a stroke, not exactly determining the placement of the stroke, but just truly saying, hey, this guy could possibly be having a stroke. Let's get him to the hospital. So more than likely, you have probably heard of a mnemonic known as FAST. We've seen it in commercials, radios, all that other stuff, and it stands for face, arm, speech, time. So what that's meaning is with those four types of categories, it can be it has about a 89 to 93% accuracy of determining if someone is having a stroke. So what that means is you go up to your patient and you say, hey, can you give me a big smile? Let me see your teeth. And whenever they smile, you can be able to recognize if there's any form of facial droop. You could then ask them to close their eyes and extend their arms out and you have them count to 10 seconds or you yourself count to 10 seconds, and if their arm drops, then that could mean that they also have some uh, neurological deficit going on, and then you can have them repeat back a sentence. So like anytime I've ever had to use this stroke scale, I always recommend saying like, hey, can you repeat after me? The sky is blue in Oklahoma. And if they are able to repeat it back clearly, then they might not be having anything wrong with their speaking abilities, but if it comes back all stuttered and jumbled up, then there could be something else that's going on. So the other one that you can, oh, and sorry, with uh, the Cincinnati Stroke Scale, it's uh, mainly used within the civilian world as well as the uh, pre-hospital care setting because its true goal is yet again just early recognition and being able to say, hey, someone is having a stroke. Let's go ahead and let's get them moving. Um, the other type of uh, stroke scale is known as the NIH stroke scale. It was developed by the uh, National Institute of Health, and its main goal is not only recognition that someone is having a stroke, but it also helps to determine that uh, of the pla Sorry, it's also used to help determine the placement of where the stroke could actually be occurring. So, with this particular scale, it's tested over eleven different items, and it's norm. And this scale is normally done within the hospital setting because it takes a lot longer than the Cincinnati fast mnemonic and the re and the reason for that is because it's normally performed by an attending physician and it just is being able to be used to help determine like okay could it be happening on the right side of the brain the left side of the brain and what all could it be causing so with this test it tests over 11 different things it tests for their level of consciousness um, their 
uh, how well their gaze is, um, their visual acuity, uh, facial palsy, motor arm and motor leg, uh, their limitaxia, their sensory abilities, their limitaxia, um, their best language, uh, dysarthria, and then extinction and inattention. So anytime I've ever, so I currently work at Integris uh, Southwest and I've actually used that or seen the NIH stroke scale used a lot. Um, and pretty much what they're doing is they are doing more of trying to determine what type of stroke they could possibly be having. So like, for example, with the fast mnemonic, if I tell someone, hey, can you repeat after me? The sky is blue in Oklahoma. If it's jumbled up and all that other stuff, uh, are do they understand that I'm trying to get them to repeat the sentence or can they just truly not speak? So yet again, like, can they, are they trying to form the words and they're just not coming out clearly or is nothing making sense? So what we, with the NIH scale, what I've seen happen, so like, for example, I have my little Apple pencil here. If I went up to someone and I said, hey, can you tell me what this is? And if they come up and they were speaking gibberish, but they're nodding their head and going like, yes, I know what that is. Um, and they could be like taking their hand and pointing it like this and they could be having something with like a problem going on with their tongue or their speech ability or something of the sort. But if they're sitting there and they're going, I have no clue what that is or any of that other stuff, then that could be another sign of that they could be possibly having a stroke. Um, they also are seeing like how well each of their motor abilities are. So I've seen attendings ask them to go from their uh, shoulder all the way down their wrist, see if they're able to move their arms at the same speed and at the same ability. And each test that the attending physician will do is based on a zero to four scale or a zero to two scale. Um, all of this comes to a grand total of over 16 points. And with the NIH scale, you're wanting it to be kind of like a golf scorecard. You want a really, really low score because the higher score that you have means that the greater chance of possibly dying from having a stroke. So if you have a 16, you have the highest ability of possibly dying from a stroke. So myself personally, I find both of the tests, uh, very accurate and has a very strong capability of being able to determine if someone's having a stroke. Um, if I were to choose personally, because I'm going into the first responder field, I'm going to be choosing the Cincinnati uh, fast scale more often than I will be the NIH, just because we don't have as much time. We need to be getting them to the hospital as quick as they can. And once they're in the hospital and has the ability to be looked over by a physician, then yes, the physician can be able to do the NIH scale, which takes a lot longer. Both of them are incredibly accurate in determining that they have a stroke, but but no matter what, if someone is having a stroke, their biggest problem is they um, is that time window. They have to be able to get either the TPA drug in them or possibly off to surgery. If not, they could have uh, horrible neurological deficits. Thank you for listening.